Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show. I'm your host, Paul, aka the guy who's always merry and sorrow man for how bad the puns are going to be in this video. The Lord of the Rings, the Ring of Power Super Bowl trailer has just dropped, and throughout this video, we're going to be breaking it all down. Now, Super Bowl teasers are often short because they cost more than Mithril, so to pad out the video, I'm also going to be talking about the cast, release date, and everything we know about the show. You've got to hit above that 8 minute mark if you want Mithril ads, and I've wasted enough of your time, so with that out of the way, let's get into the Ring of Power trailer. Okay, so as of now, the Ring of Power is the most expensive TV show of all time. Back in 2017, the company purchased the rights to the project for $250 million, and since then they've been working a way to bring it to our screens. At the start of the year, we got a title sequence released on YouTube that showed it being formed from Molten Metal. Over the top of it, we heard Galadriel discussing the formation of the rings, which was taken word for word from the Fellowship prologue. These rings, as we saw, gave power to men, the elves, dwarves, and the Dark Lord Sauron, who you have probably saw on TV. Look, I didn't say the puns were going to be good. I, I didn't say that. Now, what we know about the series is that it's going to be a loose prequel to the movies, and that it'll show the creation of the rings rather than just trying to redo what we had in the films. I think that this is a smart move, as it would be difficult to match the spectacle of the movies, and it would also end up drawing direct comparison to some of the best films ever made. Not you. Now, when discussing the series, showrunners J.D. Payne and Patrick McKay said that the show will chronicle the forging of the rings, the rise of Sauron, the fall of Numenor, and the alliance between elves and men. You might remember in the movies that after defeating Sauron, the parties involved in his demise became fractured, and the Fellowship was very much about bringing these distant houses together. The showrunner said that we pretty much only know the story of the One Ring, and that this series will show us the others that haven't really been touched upon outside of the opening scenes of Fellowship. As we know, the men ended up becoming ringwraiths, and I think it's going to be really interesting to see how they're corrupted by the power that they bring. They all end up becoming twisted creatures, not really living, but not dead either, and I think that there's some really fascinating things that they can do with them. Sauron hasn't really taken that much of a focus before either, and though he was obviously in the original trilogy, he was just basically an eye at the top of a tower for the majority of the movies. We've never got to hear what he thinks, feels, what his dreams are, and the fall of Numenor could be something that explores this. Numenor was an island that men settled on, and due to it being surrounded by the ocean, they became great seamen. No, not like that, no, don't, don't ever think like that. Now a map was released by Amazon that showed this area, and it's likely that we will see its downfall in the main series. Now they were pretty prosperous, but like all men, they faced death. Sauron weaponized this fear, and their desire to become immortal like the elves, which may be a plot point that pops up in the show. He told them that he could give them eternal life, and that all they had to do was join him in his war against the gods. They lost, and the gods, angered by the island, ended up submerging it under the sea. At the time, the earth was actually flat, and the gods reshaped it into a globe, which caused the oceans to change and massively kill the majority of those on it. Those that survived fled to Middle-earth, and here they formed the Kingdom of Gondor. In the posters, we can also see what might be the scepter of Anumanis. Uh, An Anu Anu Aminus. Anu Anu Minus. Uh, then moving on. Now this belonged to Elindil, who managed to grab it whilst he fled Numenor. He actually ended up forming Gondor, so the series is ending at that being a big plot point. It's also possible that Asgiliath was also shown in the first image released by Amazon. This is a city that appeared in Peter Jackson's movies, and it's a place that was almost reduced to rubble. The image also potentially showed the trees of Talpirion and Lorien, which were known to light the world during the Year of the Trees. You can't see them with the brightness turned up, but if you darken what appears to be the sun, you can see them there with a the light emanating from them. Sauron was connected to these two, and his Lieutenant Melkor started a war that ended up with them being destroyed. This caused the gods to create the sun and moon so that the world could have light, and whether this happens in the series or not remains to be seen. Galadriel is also of course going to be playing a big part, and in case you don't know, she's actually Elrond's mother-in-law, so we might get some of their relationship explored in the series. Take my mother-in-law for example. Oh, go on, take her. Now she of course possesses a ring of power, and I think that she's very much going to be a guide through the series that fills us in on the big exposition dumps. In one of the promo shots, we can catch her meeting Halbrand on a stormy sea, and there's also an image of her coming up from the water. This ties in heavily with her origins, and she will be played by Morfid Clark. According to the lore at the time that the show takes place in, she'd just be hanging in the elf capital of Linden, which we have had glimpses at in the Vanity Fair article. Now the trailer itself opens with the kingdom of Numenor in all its glory just before its downfall. This happened with the drowning of the island kingdom by the Valar, and it went down about as well as this trailer did. 
We will likely start here and then culminate with the War of the Last Alliance, which was the really cool prologue scene in Fellowship of the Ring. It's unclear which city in Numenor we see in the opening, but the trailer and voiceover make it clear that the Ring of Power will be expansive and adventurous with the trademark sweeping vistas. Now just like the original trilogy of books and movies, it will feature hobbits. However, the ones we're dealing with are called Halffoots, which are one of three types of hobbits that don't live in the Shire. We get a good look at one as we see Markella Kavanagh, who will be playing a Halffoot, and we can see the smile, which is a less sophisticated hobbit hole than what we saw in the Shire. Sound like Borat there. Now we get a good look at Galadriel in action, as she does her best Modern Warfare 2 ice climbing activity up the side of a mountain. As mentioned, the show is set thousands of years before we saw her in Fellowship of the Ring, and we know for better or worse that this will be a prequel to the movies. She is set to be the commander of the Northern Armies in the show, marking a major difference from the source material. Galadriel will be travelling across Middle-earth, and considering that the Second Age featured Sauron's rise to power, I think that she will be investigating this, which went down worse, worse than never mind. I really hope that Amazon don't say this, as I do want to keep getting work from them. So stop watching the video if you're Jeff Bezos. Anyway, we see her adventuring on horseback, and also fighting a monster in an ice cave, and she's definitely going to prove that girls get it done. Tying back to the shot from before, we're also introduced to the new character Halbrand, portrayed by Charlie Vickers. Along with Galadriel, the pair travel together on a raft in the middle of the Sundering Sea. We don't know much about him, but it has been said that he has a dark past, which he is running from. It is very bold of the writers to go out and create original characters, but time will tell if it pays off. Now we see another original character named Arendir, who is a sylvan elf. You may remember them from the Hobbit movies, which also featured a original character for that trilogy named Tariel, played by Evangeline Lilly. Keep saying original characters and it's doing my head in. Now just like Aragorn and Arwen, Arendir is in a forbidden relationship with a human woman called Bronwyn, so it looks like they'll be retreading the same ground in this series. Next we catch an elf that is none other than Gil-galad, the ruler of Linden. We know from the lore that he died whilst fighting Sauron in the War of the Last Alliance, but here he is at the height of his power. Next we jump to Prince Durin, whose father is the ruler of khazad Durin would be the leader who took them into battle at the last War of Alliance, and he was shown in flashbacks during the Fellowship prologue. Featured here is also another original character named Princess Dyser. Dyser will help rule over khazad Doom, which is a location that Galadriel travelled through to get to Lothlorien. You can expect to see them cross paths at some point, whilst Galadriel goes to investigate Sauron. We also get to see Elrond, who is played by Hugo Weaving in the original movie adaptations, and he's someone that's integral to the story of Sauron's downfall. Shown in the trailer is also a bizarre shot of a man inside what looks like a fiery explosion. As per Vanity Fair, we know that the Halffoots will find a lost man, and that he's one of the main mysteries in the show. This is evidently what we see here, and please, can this actually lead somewhere, unlike the White Walker mystery and origins in Game of Thrones? Yes, I'm still salty. Lastly, we cut to the battle between the Elves and the Orcs. This is a fight that we've seen in the original trilogy, which is likely how the series will come to an end. The show is condensing canon, so we could actually be seeing the War of the Elves and Sauron. However, it could be a prologue to the series featuring the War of the Wraith, which was an alliance of dwarves, early men and elves to defeat the first Dark Lord Melkor. This closed off the first age, and it would lead us into the events of the second one. Maybe in 20 years, we will get a show called Before, Before, Before the Rings of Power, focusing on the first age, and hey, let's just see how much Amazon milks this. Now, as for my thoughts on the trailer, I am pretty mixed on it in all honesty. I know there's a lot of discourse on the internet at the moment with people slating it and others defending it to the death, but personally for me, it just kind of sits in the middle. It doesn't look atrocious, but I'm also not seeing anything here that makes me think it's going to live up to the original trilogy. The budget being a billion is very expensive for something that could end up tanking, and I think it's a big risk on Amazon's part. Even the like and dislike joke I keep doing pretty much shows that everyone's split down the middle, and yeah, I feel that way too. I didn't hate it, but I didn't like it that much either, so I really don't know what to think. Bit of a bit of a weird reaction to give, but that's honestly how I feel. Now, I do have faith that Amazon can do it right, and obviously the boys in Invincible show that they have the know-how to get people involved that can knock stuff out of the park. I eagerly await a second trailer, but for now, yeah, not sure how I feel, which isn't really a good sign. Doesn't really have many Tolkien points, eh? Tolkien points, eh, having that? 
Now the series drops in September and I will of course be here with weekly breakdowns on it so I hope to see you there. In the meantime I'd of course love to hear your thoughts so make sure you comment below and let me know. We are in a competition right now and giving away 3 copies of the June box set on the 28th of Feb and all you have to do to be on the chance of winning is like the video, make sure you subscribe with notifications on and drop a comment below with your thoughts on the trailer. We pick the comments at random at the end of the month and the winners of the last one are on screen right now so if that's you then message me on Twitter at Heavy Spoilers. If you want something else to watch then make sure you check out our breakdown of the Doctor Strange trailer which will be linked on screen right now. We found loads of easter eggs in it, there's lots of plot points to talk about too so definitely go head over there right after this. Without the way, thanks for sticking through the video, I've been Paul, I'll see you in the next one. Take care, peace.